Hey guys, this is Chris from InnoGames and you are watching the first episode of our brand new video podcast called InnoGames TV. From now on, we will present the news, updates, events and features from our games in this monthly show. But enough talking, let's get started with the first episode. Have fun! In this episode of InnoGames TV, we will have a closer look at the Forge of Empires winter event, give you an inside look into our Crapolis team, show you an overview of the most recent features in our RPG The West and introduce the upcoming Tribal Wars competitions. Last but not least, we will show you what we did at this year's Browser Games Forum. But let's get started with our brand new Tribal Wars 2 announcement video. Have fun! the developing of Trial Wars back in 2003 as a very small hobby project. We wanted to create a game which is fun for us and fun for some of our friends. Tribal Wars was one of the games that started the whole free-to-play movement, the whole in industry in itself. I mean, we were one of the first games out there as well. And some players really like how Tribal Wars is nowadays. On the other hand, we have also players who want to have something new, something uh, different in the area of graphics. So we decided to make a, a sequel out of Tribal Wars instead of actually making a big modern update of Tribal Wars because we wanted to keep the, the old community who are playing Tribal Wars still there and, and keep their old Tribal Wars their Tribal Wars. What we're doing now with Tribal Wars 2 is that we're just making it bigger, we're making it better. Tribal Wars 2 is a very dignified sequel for Tribal Wars. We improved in a lot of different areas, especially for new players. Um, it's easier to get into there. The first thing the players are gonna see is gonna be the, the, the big boom. It's gonna be like the new nice graphics, everything that's moving in their city, the good sound. It's gonna be a blast. The old game was very website based with a lot of tables and stuff. Now that Tribos 2 has a modern interface, it's more accessible for everyone. We did more units, we put in more buildings, and we still kept it very easy. For the more hardcore players in the end game, we have a new uh, end game features that uh, everyone can achieve, so not only the best tribe in the world. All the spies now work in a completely different way. We have put in the tavern where you, um, where you control your spies at the same time as we put in a preceptory where you can actually choose three different factories and, and, and have one special unit. It will also be the first cross-platform from the beginning on game from InnoGames so that the players also play the game on browser and on mobile devices. I like this cross-platform very, very well because you can sit in the train also at home, we can play together in one account. It's very new for Trial Wars 2 and we are very proud for this feature. We had to start over a lot of times because uh, we had an idea and, and work it out and then we recognized it doesn't work out for the smartphone version or for the iPad version or something or for this pad version itself. We made it this extra step on the iOS device and on the Android because we want the game to be just as good as possible, of course on all devices. The community aspect in Trial Wars is, 2 is very, very important. Um, you have to play these games together with your tribe members. You can still have this old feeling of Stemme where you can still wipe people out from the map. So you can still conquer their villages, you can still plunder them. That's the feeling of the multiplayer that we have in Stemme that's so important in building up these huge tribal communities. Um, Trial Wars 2 will be definitely the next generation cross-platform game. As a player, I would say, well, finally they implemented all the things I ever wanted. Travel Wars was always a big part of my life, so Travel Wars 2 is the next step, kind of. I hope, of course, that the players uh, first enjoy the game, give us very good feedback, that we then can start to improve it step by step and make the game even better, and that yeah, Travel Wars 2 will become one of the future flagship products of our company. Ho ho ho! Welcome to the Game Design Office of Forge of Empires. 
My name is Pea Kröger, I'm one of the game designers and story writers for Forge of Empires, and I'm going to give you a tour through our current winter event. This is the game as you all know it. Here we have my progressive era city on beta, and in the top left here you see something special already. This is the stars, our special event currency. Uh, you gain those stars from doing quests from this well-known gentleman here, Frosty the Snowman. He is back in town and he's giving you all kinds of different tasks for the winter time. I already finished uh, the first one so I can collect the reward and gain another 12 stars from him. Of course he will be right back with a new quest, which I'm not gonna do today. Frosty gives you a new quest every day up to the 2nd of January, so you can do 32 quests in total and gain a different number of stars in every single one of them. So now is the big question, what are you gonna do with these stars? You enter the reward window. So here we are in the special reward window. And every day there is a special selection of really, really cool rewards hidden for us. Stuff like forge points, coins, blueprints, units, more stars, and our special tiles that enable us to do extra actions. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna press the start button up here. And when we do, it starts shuffling and hiding all the rewards and presents and we will also gain 10 stars just for doing so. Once it is done, we can start opening our presents by selecting one. And let's go with the blue one here. We press it, we pay the stars, and we get two blueprints. Woohoo! Alright, let's open another one just to show it off. Another blueprint, that is cool. And we continue. What we can win today, uh, there is none of them, but we have a wide selection. Nine really cool new buildings which we can win and I already cheated a little and put a couple of them into my inventory. Let's see. I built them here just to show them. This is three of them. One of the buildings you can win is a decoration. That's the festive tree. And another one here is a residential, the snow globe. I guess this is where Frosty lives as you can see up here. And the third one, the construction should be finished any second. That is our reindeer paddock, in which you can produce Santa's helpers. Here we got it. It's a really cool animated production building, which will give you a great amount of supplies. All right, people, that's it for now. I wish you all a happy winter time and plenty of stars. Hey, guys. I am Marco from the Grapolis development team and today I would like to talk a bit about the process and the approach on how we create a new feature for you. Have you ever asked how the process looks like? Where we start, how we continue and where we will end? I would like to give you a rough overview on all these things. So in the first step, our product manager Sebastian is going to talk to the game designers. He will provide all the goals and requirements that need to be considered when creating the concept. In the second step, the game design department will do some brainstorming and think about different concepts. If everything up to that point went well, the rough concept will be presented to the whole team in step 3. Should the development team approve of the idea, the game designers will add all the details which results in the fine concept. In the fourth step, the development team will rate all parts of the event or feature by providing so-called story points for each piece. Story points represent the complexity of a task, and in each development cycle there is a limit on how much complexity the development team can handle. In the fifth step, the developers can actually start with the implementation of the event. At the same time, the graphic artists will create the screen designs and illustrations needed for the feature. In the sixth and last step, our quality assurance department will actively focus on testing the feature inside out. QA will also come up with as many edge cases as possible to check for critical game-breaking bugs. Alright, I hope I could give you a short overview on all the things that happen backstage here at the Grapolis development team. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye.
Hi, I'm Quirin, the lead game designer of the West, and today I will show you a bit about the um, stuff we currently released and um, the upcoming stuff which will follow maybe this year or in the following year. Here you see our um, admin tool in which we can see all the items we have currently in the game and also the new introduced items from the last patch. You have a little overview here over the price, um, the skills and um, of course also the item IDs and the short names and graphics of those items. And um, now we'll show you a bit about the upcoming stuff which will be introduced with the level cap race in the next patch. Um, you can already see here that we will introduce new items as well and um, there will be a couple of uh, new categories actually and um, yeah, there is some stuff you can look forward to. So much for the recent stuff. Um, I will now give over to uh, André, uh, one of our developers, um, who will talk a bit about multiplayer instances, the next big feature in the coming year. Hi, I am André. I am one of the developers working for the multiplayer instance since Queen just mentioned. And today we want to show you a sneak peek of a very early version of it. So let's get started. Okay, here we are in the game. I logged in as two different players, one on the left, one on the right. And what you can see is a very basic test map for testing purposes with a couple of houses and a wall which will block movement and your sight. Unlike the four battles, uh, the map is going to be a full screen map and thus it's going to be scrollable to give us a little more opportunities to diversify the map pool in general. Uh, but like the four battles, every player has to place himself on the map before the actual game starts. This player on the left already did it and now I'm going to add the second player on the right somewhere as well. And the first goal of the first mission will be that you and your friends will fight a bear and trying to survive. Uh, as you already can see, the bear is, as soon as you are in the vision range of the bear, he will walk towards you and trying to attack you, so you have to walk away. And he also will switch um, targets if he can't see you anymore. If you want to hit up the bear, you own as the four battle, you just click on the bear square and then he'll, you will hit back. Okay, that's it for today. We are now currently working on improving the visual feedback you get during a fight and a better AI, AI in general. So if you want to keep track on what's happening during the development process of the multiplayer sense, check out the dev blog and see you there. Hey, I'm Tom Abu, I'm the lead community manager of uh, Travel Wars. We have a new feature that we're currently implementing in the game that's called the competition. Uh, basically, it divides players into four random teams and they have to fight different challenges. Uh, we wanted to give you a look at it, so let's see how it looks in the game. So we are now in the game. This is the village overview. Uh, we have a competition live at the moment. Um, the competitions are not always running. Um, there is a set time when you can participate. So to see how a competition is going, you need to go to the ranking and then select the challenges option. And here you have the overview of the competition. You can see the four different teams, uh, which are selected in colors. The current leader of the competition is the blue team. You can also see uh, why we are competing, because we are giving a reward to the winner of the competition. In this case, uh, it's going to be an increased production. And as mentioned earlier, you have a different set of challenges. To keep track of your progress, you can see how it is performing at the moment in your world. Um, so as you can see, unfortunately, at the moment, our team in the World 13 is in the last position, but we are not so far away from the top. And something that's really nice uh, with Star Wars is that I can play on our mobile version. So right now I'm playing on the iPad. I can also check my progress of the challenges by just going to the challenge page and also checking how my team is currently doing on my world and how it is currently doing overall. Um, so the mobile version allows you to check how the competition is going. Also, we're not at home, so that's pretty convenient. So we hope that you will enjoy our new competition feature. See you in the game. Tradition meets modernity. For the first time, the Browser Games Forum 2013 took place in Hamburg, in the historical Courier House Movers and shakers of the browser and mobile games industry came together to discuss the current and future opportunities. 
not worthy to mention that InnoGames also attend the conference. The two-day fair was packed with interesting lectures and discussions about the field of browser games and the future of cross-platform gaming. In order to show their newest products and to present the company, InnoGames had its own booth. If in Hamburg uh, an event like this happens, so of course we have to attend and uh, want to show ourselves, want to present InnoGames as a company and also of course as an employer to show what we are doing, uh, what kind of people we are looking for and uh, that's a good possibility to present ourselves to a kind of uh, yeah, family, a kind of community within the browser games branch. Besides that, InnoGames CEO and founder Henry Klinfurth held a speech about InnoGames' journey into a cross-platform company and the importance of this process. First important because our players want it. Our players want to reach our game worlds from different devices. They want to play our games not only from the PC browser, but also from their mobile phones or from their tablets at home. We're working on to bring our existing games to uh, cross-platform gaming. That means we are developing tablet and mobile versions. And we are working, of course, on new games. And all of these new games will be cross-platform from the beginning on. After two intense and great days, time went over far too quickly. But we are already looking forward to the BGF next year. Okay, that's it for the first episode. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. See you next time.